In 1941, America was on its way to war, and a back injury kept Walter out of the service. He was tired of performing in Wisconsin and dreamed of New York City, with concerts at Carnegie Hall and engagements at fancy hotels and nightclubs. Now, he was starting to make a name for himself, but it was difficult trying to teach people to pronounce his last name, Liberace, and not Liberace. He even printed it phonetically in his ads, on his stationery, and on the cards he sent to club owners and fans. Then the manager of concert pianist Paderewski suggested he drop his first two names, so he became simply Liberace. Looking for new opportunities and audiences, Liberace headed west, first to California for a year, and then in 1945 to the Last Frontier Hotel, where he performed for the first time in Las Vegas. He saw the wagon wheel decor, the cowgirl waitresses, the casual crowd, and decided on the spot to change his act. He played his own unique versions of down-home music. Boogie Woogie. Popular standards. And the beer barrel polka. The audience was enthusiastic, with loud applause, foot stomping, and cowboy yells. The next day, the manager called Liberace to her office and said, we're going to tear up your contract. Instead of $750, we're going to pay you $1,500 a week, and you'll get more, she predicted. In 1956, he opened at the Riviera Hotel in Las Vegas as the highest paid entertainer in the city's history. I can recall being at Liberace shows where you see the people coming in, and this is usually in Las Vegas, you know, there's a lot of people, and you could see the wives dragging their husbands, and their husbands are thinking, oh my gosh, do I have to go see Liberace? And, and I'll tell you, after 10 minutes, the husbands are cheering, they're clapping, they are so excited because this man, he just wins you over. Amazing things were happening to Liberace. In 1950, he was invited to the White House to play for President Harry Truman, and his performance was another triumph. At the president's request, he played for 25 minutes, much longer than any of the other performers that evening. He began with Franz Liszt's 14th Hungarian Rhapsody.
was over, President Truman invited Liberace to come back and said, I want Bess and Margaret to hear you. They'll be so sorry they weren't here tonight. In 1949, on his 30th birthday, Liberace was earning 3,000 a week, but he was still dissatisfied with the way his career was going. He wanted to reach a mass audience and just didn't know how. He hired new managers, the same team that represented my soon-to-be boss, Lawrence Welk, and they introduced him to Don Federson, the new manager of KLAC-TV in Los Angeles. He was a man with foresight, imagination, intuition, the perfect combination for success in the explosive new medium of television. And Don drove Liberace over to the San Fernando Valley and drove him around, and then he drove him over to Beverly Hills and drove him around. And he said, now, Lee, did you notice anything different? And he said, well, not really. What do you mean? He said, well, did you notice that there are no TV antennas in Beverly Hills? He said, yeah, you're right. He said, but what about the San Fernando Valley? A TV antenna on every house. And Don told him, that's your audience. The Liberace television show made its debut on KLAC-TV in January of 1952. He received just $1,000 for each program, and out of it, he had to pay his brother George and the five-piece orchestra. The reviewers ignored the show, but the public loved it. with positive comments, and within a month, a local bank agreed to sponsor the show. On the morning after the bank's first commercial broadcast, the manager was horrified to see a hundred people lined up at the door. A run on the bank, he thought. He soon learned, with relief, that Liberace had announced that anyone opening a new account with $10 would receive one of his records. In three months, new customers had deposited over six hundred thousand dollars in order to get a free record from the handsome young man on television. I'm going to open my program tonight, ladies and gentlemen, with a very exciting little composition by Kachaturian. It's called The Saber Dance. <laughs> 